Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, another episode of Free Range American, one of our solo episodes. I have one of a longtime friend now. I mean, we've graduated to that. It's been quite a few years. Mr. Jamie Kaler, uh-huh. one of my favorite comedians, one of my favorite MCs of events. You are the most entertaining person I've ever seen at events. I love, I love when you when you kind of have the reins when it comes to because and I'm just going to brag about you real quick. I know nope. everybody I'm talking, hey. but, uh, you, uh, you know, when it comes to the events that I've been, that you've hosted, your timing is perfect. You know, when to go in and out of the jokes and you know, when it's like, okay, let's, let's get on with either the award or whatever it is that we're doing. Like, you know how to like, just push it forward. And that's great because that's a, a talent that I think is lost. A lot of people, uh, you know, some people just drag on and Ugh. it's just kind of, yeah, it's those worst. people suck. I will anyway, tell Jamie, you, as far as going, as far as going in and out, I'm pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know exactly how many times to go in and how many times to come out. Usually, then, turns out to be two, three tops, and then I'm done. So I don't know how many you. times to go in, mm-hmm. and then how many times to go out. And honestly, they often match. Often, not all the time. Okay. Sometimes I'll go in a little bit more than I'll come out. Now, yeah, that, that does make sense. I think yeah. uh, it depends it. if it's a leap year or if it's not a leap year. I mean, those Always. are two things that that, that could yeah. be a thing. Um, so you've been a guest on Drinking Bros quite a few times. So some some of the people not might enough, be familiar. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, now we can do this whenever we want since this is in my house. Uh, so this is in my house. Time. I love your blue wall and I've got red. Yeah. So we're winning tonight. Oh, dude, we, I could flip it and go green, but that's just, you know, that's just bragging at that point. <laughs> no, I really like that. And your lighting is great, too. Yeah, it's almost it's, better than mine. I kind of want to fix my lights. I have a light. There's, there's light here. Yeah. It's still day in California, isn't it? No, it's dark out. It's, okay, okay. It's, um, the sun just set. My kids are in the other room, and I honestly thank you for this because, I mean, obviously, this is so important that I ha- I'll probably be on here for the next couple hours. Yeah, it's, it's four. We're probably going for four. You know, I would once hope you so. and I get going, uh, it's uh, it's just it doesn't stop. No, you know, no. I got I got beat up a lot on my last episode that went up uh, earlier this week because uh, a lot of the the my guest fans were were scolding me that I was talking too much, but like it was because Who was I your was. Guest? Ex- He's a, he's a friend. He's a fellow TAC P. His name's uh, Grand Thumb. And he's a shooter. He does a bunch of things. But a- anyway, like, I was excited to talk to him. So, of course, like, we're, yes, it wasn't a traditional interview sense where I'm like, okay, so then what happened? Then what happened? I'm like, oh, dude, you got to hear this. This is what happened to me here. Like, <laughs> I do that a lot, especially, yeah, I do that a lot. I do. But sometimes you have to do that because I've also interviewed people on Father Time or... That Dadlands podcast are a where one like, one word answer. Yeah, we're like they're like you're like you know they they're always the you know who they are they're always <laughs> it's never the comic or like like yeah. I interviewed Penn Jillette I think I said three words and then I could have left the room for like two hours and he just blah, 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 and he was great <laughs> so interesting but even I was like it's all yours my brother and uh, but but then you have those guys yeah. because we've had them too and we yeah. we had those episodes were unusable yeah. you're like so how. How hard was 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 that thing that you did? They're like, oh, it was hard. I still have some in the can where I can't. Wow. I have friends, and they'll be like, hey, when's that one airing? And I'm like, uh, well, you know, it's it's never. I can't hey, say that to them and go, well, it's you, never airing. You know what you can say is you can say you had cabling problems and it caused a That's, a, a click. I was like, dude, the audio is unusable. You're gonna have to come back when we'll we'll schedule you down the road. But right now, it's it's unusable. My producer. I mean, I've, I've even had, I had a guy on like trying to help him out to promote his music. And it was like the show, the show was really dead. Like he wasn't answering questions. So like, I'm trying to push it along and everything. And, and like, we get to the, the bread and butter. Like, you know, he asked, can I be on the show? Because I want, I want, I want people to hear my music. And I'm like, all right, man. So where can these people listen to your music. He's like, Oh man, you know, I don't know. Like, yeah. uh, I gotta, I gotta look because like there were some things that were the, you know, there's some things and it's like, 
I'm building a website. It's it's being built right now. I get this guy, but he wants to charge like five grand. I was like, I don't know five grand. Is there a way? And then he told me about this flavors me thing where I could just build it myself. So I'm trying to do that. My sister in law says that she has some computer skills. So, but she's you know she's got her own job. So we're trying to get emails going back and forth. But as soon as that gets up, and then I got to do the SoundCloud. Once I get it on SoundCloud, dude, this That's shit it. is so good. We're, I am gonna blow done. up. But you got to – so annoying. Dude, it is true though. It's so funny because I was telling somebody the other day. I was like, you know, I do the little videos and I'll put them in the Drinking Bros group all the time. It's so great. I just sit and watch the comments and just go (laughs) – I start commenting back on those guys. It is an amazing group of guys because there is no filter. (laughs) I love that. No. Obviously, I'm not wearing a shirt. So, and I just realized that as I looked in the picture, I was like, oh man, I forgot to put a shirt on today. That's how. But this is the type of show we wanted to have tonight. Oh, dude, I don't, I don't know if you see what daddy likes, but daddy likes. Oh, my man. Daddy. I left mine behind the computer. So, Mm. I I love big, it tastes better with bigger, with bigger ice cubes. I'm sorry. Like, it just does. Honestly, it does. If you get if you gave me a drink, I came to your house and you were really nice and you made me a great dinner and then you served me a drink after with small ice cubes, I'd have to punch you in the face. I but it now And it's not you personal. Warn, you know it's coming. Do you warn in that situation or is that a, a just out of like out of the blue be. punch in the face? I feel like it's an out of blue because I think that's something you know. Like we're not we're not twenty years old. We're not drinking Kool Aid mm. and Everclear out of a trash can. We're grown adults. God, we man, know there's I only did so that. many drinks. I remember doing that. We all did that, that. Yeah. dude. In college, we used to do this thing called. I, I grew up in New Hampshire. We used right. to do this thing called shoot the boot, and we had. I don't know if you remember the Timberland. They're probably still big. Timberland. Yeah, boots. Timberlands. Come on, Timberlands. But I'm in California. Yeah. I don't. I don't. Yeah. Really, I have one pair of Sobels for the rain. That's it. I mean, even a guy used that as his rap name. That's right. That's right. That's how popular they are. <laughs> Years from now, they won't even know it's a boot. They'll just know that. Hey, Timberland. That Timberland. guy, Timberland. Yeah. Timba. So we used to do, you know, you get shitty drunk. And then we would take the uh, the beer and we go, shoot the boot. I don't know why. And all of a sudden, everyone would take their shoe off, their Timberland boot, fill it with their drink, and then just drink the boot. And that That's was amazing. like, and then we put our foot back Aus- in and have like That's a That's an wet- Australian thing. It's Is called it? a shoe. It's called a shoey. Oh. <laughs> it, yeah, do a shoey. You've never, hey. heard, you've never heard somebody yell that during- like a, no. a trophy, like when someone's getting no. a trophy or a race or something like that. There's always an Australian out there. Yeah, do a showy. Oh, that's funny. No, no, we did. <laughs> we called it shoot the boot. Which, by the way, I'm gonna tell you, shoot the boot. Way better term than shoey. I like the do a shoey mm, because I like shoot the boot because that's again it. You can it could be at a wedding. It could be at a court case. Like oh, yeah. do it. Do a shoey. Like, <laughs> did you ever do the one do in the did you go to the Philippines? I have not said. Oh, okay, that. but so you were Phil- in the Navy, so you went to the Philippines. I did go to the Philippines. It's, I mean, I don't, we don't even—it's not even ours anymore. Back when I was in, it was ours. So I went to the <laughs> Philippines, and you would go to like the Mickey Mouse Club or Top Gun Club or whatever these little bars, and the girls would have numbers on them, and they'd be all over the wall and stuff. And you'd go to drink at the bar; people just getting wrecked, and uh, the bartender would have a bar mat, right? Like the bar mat, and. Yeah. Uh, at, he, they'd go, they'd sell, it would be like, I forget what it was called. It was like the bar mat drink, however it was called. And for a dollar or something, they would take the bar mat, pour it into a glass, and Ooh, then you no, would drink. Thanks. You would, and the guy would take, I think he would take the rag and wring it out. And, and it was, that was the shot, was the bar so mat So there shot. is a bar in Japan mm-hmm. that if you break the record, the current standing record for most rounds bought for the bar you get to rename the bar and they rebuy a sign and put it on out there until the record's broken. That's an expensive sign. What's the, mo- what's, what's it, where is it at now? What's the record now? Well, the last I heard our friend Eli renamed the bar. So <laughs> hopefully it's still standing. But what he did is he got, he was live streaming on Twitch and he was like, Hey, donate now and we'll rename this bar together so he had he had a few hundred people helping him out with 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 the cash but it'll probably it's going to be named black rifle coffee next time you go to uh, (laughs) japan i feel like and if if you see me looking this direction it's because your screen is here my camera is there so i'm one i'm i am watching you but i'm also trying to be cognizant of the lens like dude i'm an actor the only thing i'm looking at is myself that's great that's it and i just look (laughs) i mean this is 
This actors. is what quarantine. I'm keeping. Yeah, I talked to Steve Howie last night for a while. He's doing good. He's doing good. One of my neighbors writes on uh, writes on Shameless. Shameless. That's awesome. It's a great show, dude. Howie's so good in it. He, great. Everything he does is awesome. Like I loved uh, the Netflix movie that he Game Over Man. Like I, that I, was funny as shit. I haven't seen it yet. Um, you got to watch that. It's on Netflix. When's, it's your next, a, when, where, when's the next, when's the range 15 sequel that I'm finally going to be in coming? Uh, you know what? I don't, I don't know if we're going to do a range 15 sequel, but let me tell you my dream, mm-hmm. you know, because I like to feel like we're kind of, we're, we're rolling with the broken lizard, like format here. Like we made our, we made our, we made our, our, our first banger, you know, that, that became a cult classic Mm-hmm. And now we're kind of waiting until mm-hmm. we develop a little bit more and and come to and you know what my dream. I don't know how much my, more you got to develop, dude. Is I, there anybody bigger than you guys? <laughs> my dream movie would be and and we've talked about this going because we did you linked us up with Steve Lemmy and the guys because you're on Tacoma FD, which mm-hmm. amazing by the yes. way. That's got to be the most and, fun experience ever. Dude, I mean, my boys was the greatest. You know, I was did we did like sixty episodes, and they were all my groomsmen. We were best friends. But I will tell you, since my boys ended working on uh, Tacoma FD with Lemmy and Heffernan, and the whole cast, Eugene Cordero, Gabe Hogan, Hassie Harrison, uh, Marcus, you're like, it, it was the closest I've seen since my boys. Where I was like, God, I don't want to go. Like people wouldn't go home. When we finished my boys at the end of the day, like you, usually, don't, you don't leave. No one would leave. And so we, I remember we were on, we shot my boys on Paramount. We would hang and just booze hard. And then we had golf carts and we're on oh, Paramount. We were on the stage where yeah. they shot cheers. We were on the stage where Mary Tyler Moore got shot. And so oh. we would just cruise around Paramount and they'd be shooting some crazy late night scene outside and, all these shows were there and it was That's just amazing, like, man. It was and, and let's get back. Let, yeah. Let's touch more on Tacoma FD in a minute. Like, cause I, I do want to hear about that yeah. whole experience and it's still ongoing, but my dream, my dream is I do want to approach Lemmy and Heffernan to say, okay, here's, here's the situation. It's the, in, in the movie, it's a bunch of ex military guys, our crew, mm. a bunch of ex cops, their crew, are now in a border town in Arizona and we've all joined the border patrol and you're the chief, but we're opposite shifts and we hate each other. So it's the military guys versus the cops. This would be the funniest. And then, and then we're fighting essentially like this motorcycle gang from across the border. That is all the nitro circus guys. <laughs> Dude. And they're doing tricks over the fence. Yeah. Oh. And, and then we have to we have to come together eventually to like take down this this faction of a cartel that's a motorcycle gang with the tricks. But we can that's really pull that good, off. dude. JT, it would that's be really good. so funny. It's also like it's so current. You know, it's it's got the whole yeah. immigration thing, but it's just you could but really it's also, blow it up. And I think that I think it's a great yeah, dude. It's please. taking it's taking both of our universes and merging right. them. You need a good writer yeah. is what you need. Yes, we do. Writer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but that's what it is. It's merging. You know, they are the most iconic police characters in modern film history. Yeah, and now fire. Hands and they down. are totally, yeah. Yeah. So it's like now, and then you take us as the military guys and you, you merge us together and you pit us against each other. I mean, can you imagine me and Heffernan fighting like over the rightful heir to the fat guy that likes to eat? Wow, you know what I mean? <laughs> Are you still are you still playing the fat guy? I'm always a fat guy. You're not the fat guy at all. <laughs> I had to beat up Heffernan in that one episode where we boxed. I don't know if you saw that one, but we boxed in season one. And I, I'm gonna I'm gonna and binge. I was like the crazy police captain who's like, I'll knock you out. <laughs> and he was like, but I was like, Badoosh. it was so much fun, dude. It was so yeah. Let's life. let's dive into that. Okay, you they're the best. By the way, the show's on tonight. And it's, yeah. got, oh, really? it's still, this whole season is still going. Yeah, it's Thursday and it's, night. And it's True TV, right? It's on True TV on cable. Okay, done. Lemmy, Heffernan, so great. They may have Can come. Can you buy it on iTunes? I don't know. I don't think you have to. You could probably watch it on demand on True. Or you could buy it. Uh, I don't know where you can. Uh, I'm gonna, blah, we'll, blah, we'll look blah, into that and then yeah, we'll yeah, put yeah. that in the link. Yeah. If Because you know what? I've been meaning to to binge all the seasons. I feel like season one's on either Netflix or Amazon. That would be, I'm going to look for it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know what, here's what I told those guys. And I, I truly believe this is true. You know, we were going through this crazy, like when I was a kid, dude, it was meatballs 
and um, Spinal Tap and Animal House before that. And they were these crazy R-rated comedies that were I grew up on. That was the touchstone comedy. And all of a sudden, in the past few years, we went through this crazy kind of Puritanism where everything was like, oh, that's that joke's so politically incorrect and it's wrong. And I think, you know, Mel Brooks, you couldn't make Blazing Saddles today. No. Uh, oh, God, are you but kidding? But the pendulum always swings. And you guys are the exact same. I mean, especially with Range 15. You guys, there's, and especially this whole, your whole thing, drinking bros. What we talked about earlier, there's no filter. And I think we all want to go back to there to go, look, yeah, I'm an Irish guy. Call me a drunk Mick. It doesn't bother me. It's part of no. who I am. I should it's be part of the my, comedy. It's, it's part of the, the comedy. comedy. And we've been so watered down and gone like, Oh my gosh, you really just, you hurt somebody's feelings. You said that they, you're like, shut the fuck up, dude. It drives me nuts. And so I I think those guys and you guys, especially your website and all the, all the different stuff you and Matt and all the guys make and those guys have just crossed boundaries where it's like, whoa, can you do that anymore? And you're like, we need to do that more because that's what comedy is. And I guarantee you a lot of people are feeling that right now specifically because everybody's been on the quarantine. Yeah, we're on everybody's edge. everybody's well, no, it's everybody's going back and watching old old stuff. And same here, I've been yeah. doing it. You know, I've I've started going back and watching. I mean, one of the really fun things that I've done recently is there was a a, a documentary that came out about the movie Alien, um, the making of it. And it was amazing, but it also explained the order, the order of that universe. So I went back and watched the aliens movies in the order of which they took place in their, in their universe. And it's, and it's amazing because they connected movies that were made up until two years ago. They connected there's, there's sets that were built in 1979. That's 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 connecting to a movie that was shot in 2017 and it's just really cool yeah. like a, it was a super cool prometheus. thing prometheus but yes prometheus yeah, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. covenant covenant is number 2 yeah and then and then it goes alien alien 1 alien the first alien, alien, two, alien still to this day dude you might be too young but i went to the movies to see it yeah. and i it was one of the greatest movie going experience cuz you didn't know back in those days you there wasn't like comic con you didn't go and see a 3 minute here's a movie coming out 3 years from now you didn't know anything <laughs> but the poster and the poster had the greenish egg, the egg and there was a line that said in space no one can hear you scream that's yep. it and so you go on that friday you see opening movie you might you might see a trailer that's kind of elusive but no clues are given and then you walk in and it's like I don't know if you remember I just watched Alien again which is kind of weird well yeah and, so did I so and the you're a talking forms t- and then the L forms, and then the I, and then the E, yep. and it goes alien, and it slowly pans out. And he creates a world that nowadays people don't have the patience. They'll go like, ah, oh, it's been 30 seconds. I get, it's like, just sit back. He's going to dole it out to you like, well, like a you know, delicious meal. You have to watch that documentary now because you're going you're gonna to love it. Because again, I would they, love ex- that. they explain in the documentary – up to that point, Close Encounters of the Third Kind was really the only like modern yes. day because a lot of people don't know Alien was filmed in like seventy eight. Like he he couldn't he couldn't get that made for a long time because people were like yes. science fiction's over. Star Wars yeah. cha- Star Wars changed everything, and then once Star Wars hit, then you could. But that's only two years. Star Wars is seventy six. But so here is the thing: this was the first time anybody ever depicted an alien as being that terrifying yes and and it's r-rated it's r-rated and they don't even show the first uh chest explosion scene until almost 30 minutes into the movie yeah so you're sitting here like what is i can't imagine what it was like for you to be there in the movie theater because epic 30 minutes you don't know what's in store epic you know kids today they don't they don't understand the reward of being of paying something off it's it's such immediate gratification that there's no, you know, like Breaking Bad, I thought, really paid off. And now Better yeah. Call Saul is paying off in a way where you, you're rewarded for putting time into the story. There's, a, there's an amazing story. And if you listen, it's not going to happen in 30 seconds. It's not a car chase. It's like a slow, it's slow burn. But our brains aren't wired that way anymore to sit back and just go, these guys know what they're doing, man. They're not wasting yeah. words. There's two hours. They're going to tell us a sick story. Let it wash over you. 
but people people have a tough time doing that anymore. No, I mean, uh, even comedy comedy formats have changed, and we can touch into that uh, in a second when it comes to like just skit based comedy. But like I was saying, so people are going back and watching these old movies, these old comedies. I mean, even I'm catching myself watching these old comedies, going, "Whoa, that wouldn't fly today." No, slow. <laughs> Some of them don't hold up. Some, I would say, ninety five percent do not hold up. But when you find those one or two, you go and that's like. The could one. you Aliens could you one. imagine trying to make shallow Hal today? Wouldn't uh, happen. No, oh God, no, God, no. no. I actually no. think I think shallow Hal. It kind of makes me laugh. I think it's really it's funny. amazing movie. But amazing movie. I they and Gwyneth Paltrow has talked about. She did interviews about like how bad it was, and I'm so sorry I fat shamed people. <laughs> I, dude, I have this whole thing, and I think somebody said Bill Murray talked about it recently, but I've talked about it all the time. Of like, look, you know my humor. I'm self deprecating. I'm not wearing a shirt. I no. I pick on me. I, when I was a kid, I had a laser sharp tongue, and I could destroy people in two seconds. And I had to learn how to use it, and I stopped because I really hurt people's feelings when I was younger. I just didn't know any better. And I hate that type of humor now, but I'm always like, look, love yourself, enjoy who you are. I'm pasty white, I'm covered in freckles. This is who I am, I can't change that. But when you're f obesely fat, to, to say, listen, yes, love yourself, but throw a salad in. You could, you could be healthier, <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm not going to call you a fat fuck, but you, no. I want you to enjoy who you are, but it's, it's getting to a point where it's like, you know, that's Tommy's big bone. Tommy's 400 fucking pounds, dude. <laughs> are you high? They're going to bury him in a piano no, case. I mean, he, we are, he doesn't fit in the coffin. I don't know what to tell you with Tommy. We are an excuse culture now. I mean, we're, we're like, an excuse culture. Fault. We're a dismiss culture. We're a, Jared, it's, my metabolism yeah. doesn't, it doesn't process food fast enough. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm working uh, on it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's a headache, but again, yeah. Yeah. Trying to get, trying to get that script made now. Absolutely not. Are you kidding? Like the pendulum, the pendulum come back and yeah. it's going to come back with a vengeance of like, yeah. where do you see? It'll be like, you know, like, it'll be like torture porn comedy where it'll be like, oh my God, even that's like, holy people are coming back. People are so old. And I think this pandemic is going to change a lot of things because it's really a wake up call to go, dude, what are we doing here, man? Life is so, short. Laugh at yourself and enjoy it. Here's a, qu here's a question. Well, let me, let me jump back into the content thing and we'll, we'll go to something. I'll go to that after that. But, um, the, the difference in speed and content, if you look at back like IFC days, like uh, 2008, 2009, you had the, the, the comedy, sketch comedy troupe, uh, The Whitest Kids You Know. You remember them? Like I do. Yeah, I know them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zach, if you, Zach Craigers, I think, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because they had a couple movies. Yeah, funny uh, guys. Really funny guys. Yeah. And, but if you go back and watch some of their sketches on YouTube, they're three and a half, four and a half, five and a half minutes long. When- when I was watching these things 12 years ago, I didn't notice that time, that timestamp at all. Like I sat there completely engulfed, waiting for the punchline, waiting for the joke. Like there, and, and four to five minutes of a YouTube video was completely acceptable to me. You try, try that now. <laughs> I am. I am trying it now. And I'm trying to bring it back because, he, you know, I posted a video the other day. It was a monologue and it was me like three and a half minutes. And, you know, some of the people were like, it's too long. Nobody can pay attention that long. I go, hey, that's your fucking problem, dude. <laughs> that's a you problem. I'm giving you a piece of content. I don't give I don't give a shit. Do what you want with it. But I have a point to make. And if you don't, you know, if it's not for you, it's not for you. I get that. But I, I feel like it's a shame because, you know, everything, every joke can't be placed into 30 seconds. You know, yeah, you're like. That is true. You're like, but enjoy the moment. But people are like, they're like. Uh, 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 click and I do the same. I do the same. <laughs> the internet has has and social media has completely shaped our attention span. Our our, t our attention span, and you know, it's interesting to see where that goes. You know what? I've, when it comes to monologues, I've always wanted to do uh, like a, a a monologue off with somebody, but as you have to dress like the Joker and you have to do a Joker monologue, and it's a contest. <laughs> I would love that. That's awesome. How much fun would that be? Like be great. we, you get one week to, to film your, you know, we give a time, a time limit and it's okay. Get yourself 
I'll, I'll hire a makeup person, get the outfit, and then you get you have to do a, a Joker monologue. So there's there's shows down here where they'll give you a theme, uh, and you know it's like the Moth. You know the Moth. The Moth mm-hmm. is a wonderful. It's NPR. It's it's a storytelling show, and you have like a seven minute block on stage. It's not really stand up. It's someone tells a crazy story from their life. And they're either, you know, some people are amazing storytellers. They're not really comics. They just tell stories. And it is, uh, it's called The Moth. It's pretty famous. And that's what it kind of is, where people do monologues. But they have other shows where they give you themes and they'll say, um, you know, charity. Is it, is it like the, whose line is it anyway, but as Similar. a longer form? This one like- it has more preparation. Some of them. There's a, there's a couple comedy shows where you walk on stage and then they tell you that the con, they tell you the subject of your joke you, <laughs> and you're not allowed to use any jokes you've ever written before. You wow, have to kind of riff be it. Tough, oh, man. people bomb. People eat a pile of dung. It's terrible, but it's awesome to watch because you know they're trying to sell it. It's in, it's the old improv game of like, oh, it's it's called professional. Where you're like, yeah, oh, I know, I know exactly what I talk, what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's great. So we, you, dude, you should totally do that with guys and drinking bros and go. Listen, you have a three minute or sixty second block. Here's yeah. the subject matter. Is this very specific subject? Give me a sixty second monologue, and then do a uh, like a March Madness. Sixty four teams. People vote, and you move <laughs> up the ladder, and then the two the two monologues go head to head. And the and winners, the winners declared. And then we have UMC. We have oh. UMC via your phone, so it's all it's all like self filmed. Well, this That'd will be, be over by then. I'll fly up there for that. Heck yeah, I'm down. There's there's a lot of fun things I think we can do in the group. Is you know hold some contests, try and get some people to start creating some content that have yeah. never done it before. Well, especially with all like the that. guys in the group, man. So many guys. Look, we just we just told a bunch of military stories. So many guys in your group have these insane military stories from traveling yeah. abroad and stuff. Yeah. You know, what's your what's your craziest abroad story right there? Keep it under 60 just, second video, yeah. self tape it, post it, and we'll we'll go through them and pick out the best. No, that would be that would be hilarious. Yeah. So here's a question I want to, you know, you've you've been in Los Angeles for a long time. You're in the entertainment industry, TV and movies. Do you think that this is the death of movie theaters? No. I I actually I I do. So do I. And I have that hunch. It makes me say it makes me laugh when Georgia opens them. I'm like Really? That's like, that's the thing you open. The one thing we are like, oh, we got to get the movies back up. Pretty, <laughs> they're not even like, even the movies are, they're like, we're not even going to the movies, the movies, yeah. the movies yeah, are the, like, no, no, the we're actual just going films. Sp- yeah. The actual films censored. are like, no, no, we're good. We're going we're straight to the house. We just rented trolls and okay. you couldn't, yeah. you couldn't buy it. Trolls too. You could only rent it. Yeah. $20, 48 yep. hour rental. My kids watched it four times in 48 hours. <laughs> because I had to get my money's worth out of it. I was like, they were like, we don't even want to watch it. I go, you sit down, you're watching this thing again, dude. It was 20 I, bucks to rent this. I did that day. with Last Full Measure because Last Full Measure just jumped on digital and it was $20. Those for are my month. buddies. Todd Robinson and my other buddy, Peter Winter, went and he he directed Second Unit and helped produce it. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That I've movie's awesome. That movie. That's a good one to promote too. Those guys are great. That's an awesome movie. Yeah, that movie, that movie they did a... They did an excellent job portraying like the reality of Pentagon, like, like the bureaucracy of the whole thing. Sure. And it's like somebody that was willing to just let that die just because he didn't want to do it. Right. Like that was, that was really, it's sad, but true. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so it's just shit, but yeah. Yeah. Like movie theaters, this could be the death of them because even when this lifts, you know, you've already seen, uh, a few state governors have already extended all the way to June one. Um, so even when this is did, over, did they? Cal- did yeah, California? there was there. It wasn't California. Still like May seventeenth or something. My kids, dude, I'm home. I'm homeschooling children all day, <laughs> all day. That's amazing. It's that should be a show in itself. It should be a show. It's except it would be like the most sad drama of all time. Of like, <laughs> they, they could just come back and it's just it's just. 22 minutes of them screaming, snack, give me a snack. (laughs) Shut up and do your homework, dude. You're on a Zoom call right now. (laughs) Yeah, you're on a Zoom. Do your homework. Terrible. But yeah, once once it's all turned off, nobody's flocking to a theater. Like there's going to be a lot of psychological third order effects here with people and nobody's just going to, it's not going to go back to normal overnight. 
And this is dude, how, this is 18 months away. Yeah. It's, it's and how is a movie theater going to survive? It's not going to survive. And here's the other thing. I don't know. When's the last time you went to a movie theater? Do I have a giant I screen? I went to a giant screen TV in my back bedroom. I'm like, the last thing I want, I've gone once or twice for like, I went and saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood okay. at like the arc light on 70 meter screen. Because <laughs> Quentin Tarantino and I go way back to Reservoir Dogs and even True Romance. So I'm, I, I wow. felt like I owed him a trip to the movie theater. But aside from that, Blade Runner 2049, maybe. Nothing else. Avengers well, Endgame. Avengers Endgame I saw in the movie game. Because, like, this is something I'm so into, is the film process, film production, and everything like that. Like, I invested a lot of my, uh, uh, you know, I built myself a really nice movie-watching experience. You know, yeah. I have a, re- a nice TV in my room. I've got all the, the lights that that I can change the color and react and things like that. And then I put two 18 inch subs under my bed and it changes the entire movie experience because the whole room is shaking. Like, I mean, I get anxiety playing video games uh, in my room because I'm like, all right, I'm done. (laughs) I read something where they were, they were like drive-in movie theaters are making a comeback. I was like, yeah, for about one day, brother, nobody's getting in their car and sitting. I grew up in a drive-in movie theater. That's where I, in high school, we used to go to the You're talking about my entry. first makeout sessions yeah. and stuff. We're at Me a drive in. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. In a, in a drive in movie theater in New Hampshire. Girl named Stephanie Peel. Ooh. Oh, man. Uh, Her and I yeah. went to that drive in movie theater. Yeah. <laughs> and it was good. I like drive ins. But, well, I think that's the only people who will go to movie theaters are people who are on dates. I mean, if you're on a date, yeah. you're like, you can't go, hey, you want to come back to my bedroom? To yeah, watch, true. To watch a movie, I still uh, do. I got a futon. You know what? <laughs> let me pop this futon down into a. I'll, let me pop it up so we can watch the movie and then pop it down. <laughs> no, that yeah, it it is. It's a dying. It's a dying. It's kind of a dying thing, and and this is going to be the last nail in the coffin. Is oh. you're yeah, and and also too though is what, I mean, you look at the video. The video game industry has completely taken over. Like. The video game industry now trumps the the movie the film industry by, billions, by, by billions. Yeah, but yes, your opening weekend on a Call of Duty franchise is like six billion dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Like not oh we we did we did one hundred fifty million at the box yeah. office and that's that's a hard goal to hit. That's barely like, that's one or two movies. Yeah, that's none. Yeah, but. Six billion dollars <laughs> on one day. Oh no, like yes, an open one yeah, day. Yeah, I know. So it's like, so so now it's it's just it it's such a weird culture shift that it's that now now I'm curious. Now I, I do I do feel bad for a lot of the kind of first time actors that were getting a summer theater release and stuff like that. Like I think about those things like right the day before this pandemic went down. How many? How many first time writers and, and producers and directors were yeah. seconds away, ink away from green light and this happened and now everything, because now that's never going to happen. How many projects would be, sh- are going to be shelved for life over this? Because you, it's oh, such a bad, because everybody shut down the second we open yeah. back up, every studio is going to have a backlog for months. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know I have a bunch of friends who are ready to shoot their pilots. They're, they're just waiting for them to open up. I was testing for a Disney dad before this happened. Um, yeah. Like three other projects going and everything was like, that's over. It is what it is. Oh, but listen, you know what? It is what it is, man. You know, it's like, yeah. we're here. I love when people are like losing their minds. You're like, just keep your head down. Shut you know what would be really off. interesting to me, though? And again, this comes from being a super film Hollywood nerd, is I would love to see studios go dig into all the the projects that were closed that have that are in the can that they that for whatever reason fell apart. Right. And they go back in and they finish them. So we start getting movies that were filmed in like the late 90s. We get movies that were filmed in the mid 2000s. Like that would be hilarious, that wouldn't would be it? Fun. Well, they're going to go as soon as this thing does open. They, I mean, there's all kinds of talk down here in LA. Like they're not shooting anything until September. We don't know yet. But the problem is when you do shoot anything, like any TV show or anything you work on, the crew is not like seven people, man. The crew is on my boys. We probably had a crew of 150. Wow. 150 people. And I mean, they're all on set. People, one guy's holding a boom mic. 
when you're shooting a scene, there's there's 50 people within yeah. 12 feet of you. Makeup, prop, yeah. art yeah. department, everybody Clo- is yeah. in Everything. and out. Yeah. So, and all those people come to work that day and then go away. And so I don't know what the answer is, but it's going to take a while. I mean, basically we're in this until there's a vaccine, I think. I mean, it's going to take a while. Well, I think yeah, we're going to loosen that- it. We're so weak that we're going to loosen it. We're all going to go out and we're going to go crazy. It's going to spike again. We're going to come. We're going to go. Well, that, gonna, that's ah. kind of my point that I've been making is like, okay, so we, so we stay in our houses until June and we, and then we finally go back to normal. And if one person has it, this starts all over again. You know, dude, it's a, <laughs> it's a fire and there's no water. So it is what it is. It's going to keep moving. It is, you know, it is what it is. But listen, I just love when people are like losing their minds. I, I do understand people. It's like a job thing. I get that. But even if you go back to work, you know, if you're in the bar or restaurant industry, you're still, I mean, it's just, this is, this is, this a, is, this is a once be, in a lifetime event. And we yeah, are, and we it's going to be change strong enough. Yeah. everybody's behavior it for is. the next decade. Yeah. My wife talks about, she talks about a paradigm shift and she's right because it's going to, this is. People will like the same way we look at 9 11 as like a, as a change in history. This is another one where it's like, this is a spot where it changes everything, man. It just does. Yeah. And, but I love when people, it's such a people fluid slow situation. down, tra- yeah. people slow down travel. People that like now, because again, like, like, like you're talking about, it's going to be a trickle effect. My buddy, it's not gonna my buddy, uh, his answer. company paints murals. And he said, he just told me, he goes, a job came available in Chicago because the original guys who were going to paint it were from New York. They paint like the sides of buildings, like the really beautiful murals. And so he, he's flying his team out to Chicago to paint it round trip flight, Los Angeles to Chicago, $41. Oh my God. Ah! If you like, this would be the time to go like, dude, I'm traveling the world now yeah like if you well, already had it and you have antibodies you'd be like well, i'm on the next flight to rome man let's do i this. wouldn't do that because uh i have experience with some people that were in a third world country when this went down and they barely got out because yeah. when you're dealing with uh a police force that's not interconnected really to the government right. and like people they're they're just hearing like dude these these guys almost got locked down in in Peru because of just yeah ignorance like like no you can't leave like <laughs> dude have you ever, have you ever watched the show locked up abroad i haven't you haven't oh it's, no. i forget what it's like this guy forget what it is it might be discovery but it's basically people who went overseas like into a foreign country still think they're in america and so yeah. and of course some guy from the airport some guy at the airport comes up and goes would you mind bringing my luggage through security and they're like, oh, yeah, absolutely. What's the problem with that? And then, of course, it's like they get busted for smuggling and they're in, they're in some prison <laughs> in Thailand. And they're like, I had no idea. It's this whole show about people who get locked up abroad. You've never seen Locked Up Abroad? I've, I've, dev- I've heard about it. Oh, and yeah, so yeah because I know there's a, there's a bunch of different cases, yeah, of people doing things that they think are perfectly normal or <laughs> acceptable people over here. People grow up in America and-, and think like, but because we were in the service and we went overseas and we were totally warned. Like if you went, I went to UAE, United Arab Emirates. And you can say, fuck up real quick there and get in jail. Dude, if drunk driving is punishable by death. Wow. Like, like at the time you were like, wait, what? Back up. And they were like, no, no, no. And so you were like, but people don't think about like, hey, I'm in a different country. I'm an Amer- Everyone has this like bravado. I'm an American. I can do whatever I want. You're like, <laughs> you're in a different country. How about the guy who stole the, in China, he took the propaganda. That was North, North Korea. North Korea. He took, yeah. it was, uh, what's his name? Otto. Thanks for coming, brother. Yeah. And it sucks. He, he, uh, he would have done something I would have totally done in college. I would have totally taken that poster and gone like, oh my God, that's going to look great on my wall. Yeah. And they were like, Absolutely. no, you're going to jail, my friend. Yeah, well, what about that dude uh, back in the 90s that got in Singapore? Like, what did he, spit gum on the street? Yes. And then he got cane or yes. something like that? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I totally forgot that. That was amazing. Like, like that is a perfect example of yeah, somebody that doesn't even example. think of something. And then it's like, wait, I'm getting capital punishment right, right. now. because <laughs> They don't think nobody, everyone. I mean, we definitely have this sense of entitlement as Americans about like, we can go and do whatever we want. And it's like, you're like, no, dude, you're in a different country and you are screwed. Yeah. Um, so let's take it back. Uh, Tell me how you met the uh, the Broken Lizard guys and then where that led and then what Tacoma FD's production has been like. 
Yeah. I don't know. How we did, did that, stand how did up that together or something. We ended up doing each other's podcast. Uh, Kevin and Steve had a great podcast called Chewing It on the Nerdist Network, which is Chris Hardwick's network. Yep. They're and it was familiar. fantastic. And I ended up doing that podcast with them. And then they came and did mine. And then they literally called and said, hey, you want to you want to play this uh, police captain? And Dude, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't get many parts offered to me. I normally have to go audition for stuff. And so even when they called and said, hey, you want to do a part? I was like, yeah, well, sure, I'll come audition. When's the audition? They said, no, no, you'll be fine. Just do it. And then I talked <laughs> to them after we shot it. And I was like, I can't believe. I go, thank you guys so much. This was a, I mean, it was amazing to be part of this. I, why did you choose me? And they said, uh, we just thought you had the perfect giant Irish skull to be the cop. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, hey, yeah, yeah, that actually, yeah, that hey, hey, actually, yeah, it's gotten bigger lately. Uh, <laughs> you were like, uh, there's nobody else. There's nobody else. So I met. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, and since then, I mean, I just, I love those guys so much. And so when I ended up, I hosted a, I, I started running a comedy show here in North Hollywood at my old theater company, Acme. And I asked them to come headline the first show. And it was so, I mean, it was a little tiny cabaret space. Seats like a hundred. It was the one I had talked about you coming to do. And they came and did it and closed it out with like a half hour. I had a couple of the comics, which is this magical night. And it was, uh, they're good guys, man. And you know what? They do it right. They, the whole show is really, if every time you watch that show, anybody in the cast is friends of theirs or That's awesome. the college buddies. Because That's how we do it. Broken Lizard came out of Colgate University. And so there was another group with Dave Park. Dr. God came out of there too, another comedy group. And so they kind of helped, they paid it forward, helped them. My other buddy, Carrie Clifford was buddies with them in college. She writes on the show. It's uh, the wardrobe person is like the sister-in-law to cat. It's crazy. It's like, <laughs> you, you really have to be careful. You can never say anything bad about anybody because everybody on set is They're related. all friends. They're all yeah. friends and related yeah. to Heffernan and Lemmy. So you're like, oh, hey, everybody, what's happening? It's, but it's it's so glorious. It was so much fun to do, and so I'm just I just root for those guys in such a way. Well, I'm excited. Like I I'm excited. I can't wait to to act with you because I definitely you know we will be. I in love movie. the border patrol thing. Listen, we're gonna talk after this thing, but we need a screenwriter yeah. because you already are. You kind of already told me the the basic three act structure. Yes, we just have to write the jokes at this point. It fits. Yes. It all fills in. And it really, it really almost writes. It's like, like with, with, with this group, you almost don't even have, all, all you have to do is have like turning point scenes and that's it. Like we just show up and start fighting. <laughs> just roll a camera yeah. to write itself. Yeah. I mean, just, I can just already picture having it just pulling up, rolling down the window. Oh, what's up military guys. <laughs> Look. All right. By the way, you, you Heffernan, bring your helmets. can I tell you this? Heffernan yeah. is absolutely nothing like the character he plays on television. Oh, I understand that because I also know that, you know, him and Lemmy are the brains behind the masterminds behind all of this. Like, no, I don't, that's not, that's not true. But it's behind, oh, behind Tacoma FD, they are absolutely. Yeah. They direct every episode. But for Broken Lizard, it was really like, it's hard to find a group of guys where they're all kind of equal parts of the whole thing. But yeah. yeah. But for this, yeah, Kevin and, and Steve are definitely the brainchild. But that's the funny thing. Heffernan is like Jerry Lewis, where he plays the idiot on camera. But off camera, he's the guy directing and writing and doing all this stuff where you're like, you watch yeah. him behind the scenes and he's like a workaholic. And you're like, Kevin, who, <laughs> who are you? This is crazy. So, uh, no, I, I love that and I respect it because I feel like it, that's kind of my role as well, too. Like, I play the dumb dumb and, 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 and the pin cushion for everybody. But I, I know exactly what you do. <laughs> I know what you do for a living, my friend. Um, yeah, they're great, man. They're great. So yeah, yeah. It'd be, a, it'd be a good partnership. Let me ask you a question. You know, I don't know if you're talking about this crazy stay at home thing. Are you quarantined in the house? Yeah. Are you homeschooling? Yeah. The kids, the kids get their, uh, they've got an app. So the, are you involved this, in it at all? Or are you just kind of sitting no, by and go, no, 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 no. Oh, dude, like I am. They, I can't even, do you know, I'm totally, my wife works. She's, she's totally busting her. She's still working. <laughs> she has a she has a, a an essential job, so she's kind of working. And I have I have the kids. I'm not joking when I tell you from seven a.m. until three a.m. I'm running. That classes. is that's a hard I, job, dude. From mid, I'm I'm at an age where people are like I can't even believe you have toddlers, let alone our homeschooling <laughs> children. Dude, every day I get up, I'm like, it's eight a.m. You're on a Zoom call. You have math, and then she's that's like, amazing. I need help, and so I'm taking it, and then I'm cutting up apples with cinnamon. And all day long, it's snacks, breakfast, snack, breakfast, snack. 
and then another class. And then I also have a preschooler who's like, just wants to watch TV. And I'm like, so I have to like pull out books and be like, no, today you're going to work on your alphabet while she works on this. And then at three o'clock, I'm like, I just want to shoot myself in the head and be like, oh my God, I can't well, believe. Charlotte's obsessed with homework. Like she thinks it's a game. So can she, can she train my daughter then? Because she does, insane. she does her entire week in, in the first day. And then the rest of the time she's outside. Like See? when I got, when I pulled into the driveway today, she had three chickens in a wagon, just pulling it into the woods. So I, I, I don't know, you know, she was, okay. <laughs> I love my school because it's, it's a real, you know, my kids go to a uh, Catholic school, a private Catholic school, which I, for me, people are like, really? And I go, yeah, yeah, yeah we're doing this. You got the biggest Irish head ever. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but they, and I said that at the beginning, cause I thought like you have like, look, let's, I think like you have like, let me get all the lessons on Monday. I'll knock this shit out and then we'll hang out for the week. They're like, no, they don't give you the lesson until right when you start. So oh. dude, it's scheduled all day long. So at 8 a.m., she goes on uh, Google Classroom or Seesaw. That's a pain in the ass. She does it. Oh, you have no, I should, I should shoot it because you have no, you I should like, you, you have could, no idea what I'm doing. You Nobody, should do a, a vlog you have no idea. of you, of you, it's you know, painful. being your teacher. <laughs> so at eight o'clock AM, they have homeroom and they all go to zoom. And then after that, there is a, a very specific class they all go to and they have to get their homework done by nine. And at nine, there's another class. And then at 10, it's snack time. Then at 11, there's another class. And then there's recess at 1130. I'm, I'm, when you say homeschooling, I'm Jared. I'm, I'm you, fucking you're homeschooling. Running a, you're I'm running not, a school over there. I'm not. I'm. I actually <laughs> just got teacher certified this week. I am certified to teach in this kind. Of, dude, it's. It's. I'm like fucking losing my mind. It's crazy. It's no, crazy. I couldn't do that. Are you kidding? I couldn't Five do days that. A week. Like, and but, she's I mean, you know she's in first grade. So and here's the weird thing. I took a math test with her the other day, and I went through and I graded it, whatever, and then I gave it. I got a 40 out of 42. I didn't even get a hundred on a first grade math test. I'm like, I can't, dude, I can't do this. this is, <laughs> I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it through this. Yeah. You know what I did this afternoon? Uh, I, I sprayed them with a pressure washer while they, while they ran, rode their bikes around. We also, dude, I want to go, we, I want to go out and go running. My wife just went running and we're like, both of us are like, we have to wear a mask. So I took the oh, kids dear. on a bike ride the other day, right? And we're in the middle of the street. We, we don't go within 50, well, 20 feet of any other human. And people are still like, you got to put masks on, dude. You, dude, mask it up. Oh, you the ma worst, and I'm like, the I worst go, is, these, is these people policing people. It's like, just stop. Just stop, go, please. You know, I, I, I don't know what to do anymore, man. I'm like, we don't even leave. I haven't left the Stay house because I don't want to, I, I don't <laughs> want to wear a mask. I don't want to wear a mask. I mean, I do. Well, when just, I, I go to the grocery store with like the gloves and the mask and they're spraying me down. But I'm nobody like, can give a clear answer. If uh, one week it's, uh, oh no, no, we, it works. And then the next week it's a, a doctor, another doctor comes out and goes, ah, it doesn't really do nothing. Like, and then another guy, <laughs> like if, like I, I've been saying, if this has taught you anything, you've realized that nobody to include our elected officials knows what the fuck is going dude. on. Dude. Like, That's my blog. I got a new blog coming. So here's what I will tell you about the drinking bros. And I love them because I keep posting these crazy rants I'm doing. I go just, just checking in with the dad lands or whatever. Yeah. And, and people comments galore. And I do have one coming. That is that of like, it's, it, it's like being back in the service. You know, when you were in the service and you were like, you wanted answers and they were like, just shut up and stand there and fucking yeah. wait. That's yeah. what this is. And people yeah. who aren't accustomed to that are like, I need answers. I, I got to know what's happening. Dude, none of us well, know what's happening. Just no, stand the at the back of the line and wait until we tell you what to do. And here's the biggest problem is every asshole out there thinks that the most recent article they read made them the newest expert. And it's like, oh, just stop. Well, you know these just people. Just stop. Yeah, I went to high school. I'm like, dude, I don't remember you finishing high school. And you're, you're the one quoting me science yeah. facts. Shut the fuck I don't, up. None of, yeah, none of you are doctors. None of you have consulted it. Even the fucking doctors I see on getting on camera, like, you can't differentiate what's fake and, like, no. built to go viral. Because right. even then, in the first two weeks, 
there was a multitude of videos of some guy in a coat with a name tag and like on a, on a webcam that's like, okay, you know, this is a confidential brief because this is only for, you know, people of this, like they, they tried to frame, make it look like the elite, like had, uh, like advanced notice and things like that. Right. But they were, right. they were all hoax videos. They were faked. It was, they weren't real. Doc- there weren't real doc- People are making videos dressed as doctors, like trying to, yeah. trying to get a viral video claiming that they yeah. know the, the, the most about them. It's just fucking dumb, man. It's, it's all, it's all BS. And the people are making fake videos. And then when there's real videos, other people are saying that's fake. So yeah. nobody, here's the problem. Nobody knows who to trust anymore. And it's really, um, it has to change or else we're not going to make it. We're not and you also, you it. also have people that, you know, are over exaggerating and like sure. have never, have never even been in an elevated situation. Sure. So of course they're going to pretend like it's the most heinous thing they've ever seen because of course. I saw that with, uh, you know, I've, I have friends on the East coast and, one person that's not that's that's not accustomed to 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 kind of stress and stuff like that is like a, when 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 they explain the situation it's like the the world is ending meanwhile another friend that's at the same place who is a navy doctor is going no 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 it's not that bad it's it's, it's normal you know people know. are coming in people are sick we're we're doing what we can you know it's it's uh, it's starting to dissipate but meanwhile, other people are like, oh, my God, it's getting worse. Is it getting worse? We don't know. Nobody don't know. knows. Nobody knows. No, I mean, because it, well, they're even coming situation. out. I just think it, it changes day to day. And, and But, it, I, you know, listen, it is a virus. There's no vaccine. It's going to come back if we kind of congregate again. So yeah, they're going to do what they're going to do. But you know do. what? Enough. Fuck, Enough. Fuck this thing. It's all you see when you open up every social media platform. Every motherfucker's got to. Got a got an opinion on it. I'm over it. Let's be funny. We're funny. You know what movie? What movie do you want to make with me? I like the Border Town ones. So. Well, yeah, we're doing that. Which did one? Would see, be- hey, by the way, did you watch the one I made with my kids? The Adventures of Rainbow Kitty. No, I need that. That's Is it on Instagram? Uh, it's better on Facebook because Instagram okay. made me crop it up. It's 90 seconds long. So I basically I basically started shooting movies with my kids. I'll have to send it to you. We can put a link yes, to it. Yes, please. But, uh, I, I, but it's I The Adventures it. of Rainbow Kitty. I will tell you, you know, it has been this time of like, it makes you really think about what's important and go on. Oh, yeah. You know, at the end of the day, you're like, who cares? Just everybody keep your head down. Try to, I, obviously, listen, we're all in financial ruin. It's going to be financial ruin for the rest of the year for everybody. It doesn't matter whether they open the business. Nobody's going. It's going to be this crazy financial ruin. It's going to take another yeah. year before everything starts to settle back in. And who knows where we'll be by then. But until then, just. Yeah, relax. Work on yourself. Like We were talking about that today. On, I mean, on you almost died from E. coli. Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, and uh, I actually talked to a friend today. Is the first person I talked to that have had it, and you know, he said that it lingers. Like he said, it took like seven months for him to get fully better. And it's like I'm, I'm feeling that. Like I'm on week four, and even today, like this evening, I had a bad, I had a bad evening. Like I can see because I see something's missing from your side. Exa- of the- exactly yeah. because and it bummed I, me out. I was like, oh, Jerry, man, I, I wanted to so bad, but I, I mean, I had to. I was, I was getting set up earlier and I had to stop and go lay down because I was cramping and like, like, like I had to just stop and sit under a fan and like mellow out for a little bit and then come back in and, and, and get back to it. But it's just, um, yeah, well, you got to stop I'm, snorting the chicken shit, man. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't recommend that at all. It's a horrible thing. To do. <laughs> Dude, I don't think, I don't think my kids are going back to school for the rest of the year. Oh no, not, not you. I mean, you guys, September, you, maybe September. You guys aren't going to do anything for another two years. Are you kidding? Como or not Como, but Newsom, like Newsom wants to be, you know, the best California governor ever. So he is going to keep you guys as safe as possible. He's, he's, he's making us pretty safe. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> do you feel safe? Do you, at, I, least you got your, at least you got your pool, you know, that's an upswing. You know, we're doing construction right now. I'm in the middle of construction. Like it's bad. It was a bad time for us. We're in the middle of construction. And, no, I didn't. Uh, we're adding a bedroom on, yeah, because you know yeah. we, we need room for the kids and so for me, yes, honestly, for, for when you. I come. But luckily, we were in the pool today, and you know today was like ninety-five degrees here. Oh, that's awesome! Glorious. 
So it is one of those things, dude, of like sit back, enjoy, watch some movies, watch some TV shows. Don't get on social media and tell everybody you're an expert. I do love it, though, that we like, you know, influenza, whatever, 1918, 1917, killing kids. Nobody had Netflix. Nobody had anything. It was like they would just would trap. And now we're like, dude, dude post what we're World asking War. you to do, we want you to stay yeah. home and watch TV. And they're like, I won't do it. I post will not World do War it. II, uh, wasn't there were like millions killed by a, by a flu outbreak? Yeah. Like millions. Like 10 million. In World War II? Post World War II. Oh, easily. But the one in, the one in 1917 killed like. A third of the planet, or something, something insane. Holy didn't shit! It, didn't it kill some some crazy number? I don't know. I don't. We'd have to look that up. Tens of but millions, again, I think. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck this! Fuck this! I mean, we. You know, it's like it reminds me of the Matrix. Do you remember the Matrix? By the way, which oh. I watched. Have you watched it lately? Yes, I did. So, it's still like a perfect movie. The the, the problem is oh, they I, made they made two and three, which made one not great, but one yeah. still is a perfect movie. But Mister, he goes. You're a virus, Mr. Anderson. Yeah. <laughs> You're a virus, Mr. You're Anderson. A virus, Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. <laughs> um, so do you know who Freddie Wong is? Freddie W. He used to own a production company called Rocket Jump. He's one of the original YouTubers. He's an Asian guy, really funny, really creative. Done things with like John Favreau and Dude, stuff like we that. We went, we met him. When you okay. were down here one time, you yeah. dragged me downtown to some weird thing, and and you go, "That's Freddie Wong," and I go, "Who?" And you're my, like, "My idol." Like, yeah, he's he's the biggest thing on earth. I know. That. Yeah, so he was out here a month and a half ago, and him and I start going down the rabbit hole. Like we just start talking about uh, there's no really fun multi billionaires out there. Like nobody, like like Jeff Bezos, like. If you had Jeff Bezos money, what are you doing? So me and Freddie start going down this rabbit hole and we're like, we're like, uh, we're like, your friends come over. You're like, Hey, you want to see the, uh, second first matrix? And they're like, what do you mean? Second first matrix? Yeah. I had it remade, but with Russell Crowe as the lead, <laughs> like you bring back the entire original cast oh, or, yeah. and make Gilbert Godfrey Neo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And and you're the only one that has the the master copy. You spend 150 million dollars to remake the Matrix shot for shot with Gilbert Godfrey as Neo, and and you're the only one in possession of this movie. Yeah, <laughs> but I love I love that's where you go. Like if you're a, if I'm a billionaire, I'm like, oh, I've cloned myself. I've already cloned. Uh, there's like a bunch of clones. It's like multiplicity. Oh, of me. I would buy a network. Like I would buy, I would buy like ABC. Sure. I would, I would. Nah, they're dying. I wouldn't buy. No, ABC. no, no, no. I would buy Showtime because I wouldn't let the FCC uh, govern me because, and then what I would do is I would put out, you know, my, my sweeps season, you know, yeah. sweeps for sweeps. I'd say we have $250 million to make to make our, uh, you know, once my network launches, there needs right. to be shows 24 hours a day. So yes. we have $250 million. I just start taking meetings, pitch me the fucking craziest shit ever. And be like, oh yeah, that sounds fucking weird. Uh, Greenland, give them money. <laughs> like, <laughs> Dude, I love that you're still working. If, if, you, if you had that, if I had that money, I would live in like, you wouldn't see me again. You wouldn't see, I mean, you might see me on like page six, but you wouldn't see me like going, I need to make stuff. I would be like, I golf, I would do whatever. Nope. That. I would be, oh. I, honestly, if any of you out there, just if I ever get large amounts of money, you're going to be highly entertained, highly entertained <laughs> is what's going to come out of this. <laughs> well, listen, I'm in, I'm in all those productions. I'm going to tell you. That Absolutely. Right I mean, you should be pitching at least 10 of them. Like, as a matter of fact, you're probably going to show up with a giant book and I go, how much? Well, I need, I need uh, 75 million. All right, cool. I don't know. Look how white I am. <laughs> I'm in the desert. <laughs> this is my new set at my house. Yeah, by the way. Your set's nicer than like MSNBC, dude. Your, your set's, your set's. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, on today's news. Um, yeah, it's going to be weird because I'm so bright and you're, you're the contrast. You're going to have to fix it in post. Yeah, we're just going to have to lighten it up. We'll fix yeah. it in post. You know, I had a couple frames. 
Well, I think my I just heard, I think my kids are finally asleep. Congratulations. Yeah, which means But I you've got a early morning tomorrow, school it, teacher. Yeah, I got to No, I have school. I, yeah, I have school, school. at 8 a.m. You, you yeah. are being punished. You know, I didn't like first grade the first time I did it. I'm enjoying <laughs> it way less this time. It's really not <laughs> the best. Dude, it's so crazy. She'll like she'll show me math problems and I'm like, you know, they have the new math and I didn't learn new math. And I'm just like, well, nine plus seven, 16. But they're like, no, no, no. You got to get to the 10 first. You got to find a way to get to the 10 and then justify. So it's this like a, is stupid. It's a four step equation to get to nine plus seven equals 16. You're like, and nine, what does that have to do with one, real life? None. It's bullshit. I, I don't know, but it's driving me nuts. Because, because Snapchat solves math equations now. If you, if you turn your camera on Snapchat and hold it over an equation, Snapchat will solve it. I love you. <laughs> That's so awesome. I'm like, so it's like, stop, stop. How about you all, te- teach, a, teach a first grader about taxes. There, there's that. <laughs> we didn't be, I haven't done mine yet. I guess I'm not doing it till July. Find, find, you got to get to the 10 first. You got to get to the 10 first. You always got to get to the 10 first. It's really annoying. And I mean, it's, it's just been, it's just been hard. So dude. I've this got an interesting really one for you. Um, you know, Butch Bradley. He's a comic, I think. Yes, comedian. He's the headliner at the LA Comedy Club at the Stratosphere in Vegas. So he's their resident. I know exactly who he is. Um, he's a good friend of mine. And he has... That's good right, to hear because I was like, wait a minute. I don't know where this conversation is going, but I like Butch Bradley. Yeah, and, I was, oh, I, and I was like, I wait a minute. I love Butch. Was, wait, should, um, I, should I hate Butch Bradley or should no, I? I, I not at know. all. Um, he's the nicest guy. So literally days before this went down... He was like, look, I want you to get on a plane, fly to Vegas, and you're, do not tell any, any of your people that you're here. Do not tell anybody that you're in Vegas. I'm going to work with you during the day. You're going to get five to 10 minutes every night for seven days. I'm going to, as soon as you walk off stage, I'm going to give you your feedback. And then the next morning, we're going to hit the fucking paper again. We're going to work on it and you're going to do it again the next night. You're going to do that for seven days. After seven days is over, tell everybody you're here, have them all come out. I want you to take that stage and I want you to see, see how this goes. And like, he's like, this is going to be a riot. And I'm like, I'm so excited because that that's a once in a lifetime offer. A, yeah. a comic like him saying he's going to one-on-one me for a week and then put me on stage with him at the LA comedy club for a week. Like this is the most amazing, like, like I have to take this. Yeah. Well, listen, ha- and so you'll end up doing five to 10 minutes total. Yeah. Well, each uh, night. Yeah. I mean, you know, okay. So when I, I was headlining comedy clubs after one of the seasons of my boys or whatever. And so I took the other guy, Mike Buner, who plays Kenny on it and he'd never done stand up. And so I, he goes, Hey, I go, Hey, you want to come out? We'll make it kind of the guys from my boys or whatever. He had to do 20 minutes before me. Oh, he'd done a tons of improv shows. He was a pretty great actor or whatever. And to his credit, it was so funny too, because like before he went on stage every night, he, we went on the road for nine weeks, headlined these comedy clubs all over the country and he was the middle. He did 20 minutes before me. And uh, he would be like, does this work? And I'd be like, dude, shut the fuck up. Just get on stage or whatever. And he ended up doing amazing to the point where yeah. local comics who were the opener were like, how long have you been doing comedy? And they were like, he would be like, this is, this is the first time I've ever done stand-up. And they'd be yeah. like, fuck you. But <laughs> to your, listen, it's like, you're a performer. You know what you're doing. It's just about framing the monologue and framing the jokes. And once you get... You know, it'll take a few nights to go, just write a bunch of jokes, tell them. The ones that work, keep them. The ones that don't work, ditch them. them. That's <laughs> That honestly is the hardest part for most comics. I'll see a guy who, and I'll go, dude, I've seen you tell that joke 50 times. It's never worked once. He goes, yeah, but it's it means a lot to me. And I, th- I go, Shh, shut up. <laughs> just cut it. It's not working. It didn't work from day one. I don't know why you thought in I've your got head. A- I've got a really good one that I wrote last week that I'll tell you once we're done with this because I'm, I'm really proud of it and I've never heard anybody do, do it. So mm-hmm. it's like, I'm, I'm happy because it's a perfect opener okay. and it's about two minutes and I can stretch it if I need to just a little bit. So okay. I think I've got my, my opening, uh, but yeah, I'm excited. 
I really, I really want to go I'm to not going to hear it. You were, that, was a total, that was a total tease. No, no, no. I, once we're done recording, uh, to, oh, okay. I, I can't, I can't Dude, let do you know everybody hear it now. My album's coming out on Father's Day. Did I t- oh, yeah. Have I told you that? Oh, yeah. I knew I knew you. you I, was, I was chatting with you. Last time I yeah, was in yeah. LA, you were recording it. And that's, that's right. why we couldn't link up. So we were cut finished. it. And now we have, it's coming out through Comedy Dynamics. It's called Happy Father Days. And it will come out on Father's Day, and it's going to play on Sirius XM in its entirety on a couple of the channels, yeah, for that day. And then it will get released into all its bits. And I'll have a bunch of videos that I'll start I'll do posting. a review on it. Yeah, we'll do a review. Yeah, it'd be great. Review. Yeah, absolutely. God damn it. It better be a good review, dude. I'm gonna It'll be a good review. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Man, school teacher. Never would have thought. Fucking dude. Honestly, it's like, I mean, if I can't get material out of this, this is like... It's like the, it's the craziest, like pe- people still like, they're still like, you're a father. And now they're like, you're a homeschooling father. It's gone exponentially. Like this is I mean, crazy. Sh- shit, think about like two years from now, this is a whole bit for you. Uh, who remembers the quarantine? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, people. Where are my quarantine people at? Who's, who's, who's got some quarantine jokes for me? Oh, uh, it's crazy, dude. It's cra- it's just crazy times, man. I well, mean, we're dealing so with it. For the people that uh, that are new to you as of this episode, I know we didn't do a formal interview. It's because we've had you on so many times Did you see what I wrote before. for my name? I love um, it. The guy from the thing. I'm the guy from that thing. <laughs> Even today, somebody, somebody sent me a pic and go, were you in the 70s show? I was like, I was in the 70s show. Somebody else, two days ago, was like, were you, did you do a scene with Gene Wilder and Will and Grace? I did do a scene with Gene Wilder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Dude, crazy. If you want to, if you want a really fun one, look up Tate Fletcher on Instagram. I know His him. name's, Yet you 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 would you've probably done ten movies. I know him. Tate Fletcher. How do because I know? I know Tate, exactly who that is. Tate is in so many movies as as a guy that dies. Sure, <laughs> like, I got a few of those. I got a few. He he is the like number one thug in every action movie that exists. Like I mean, even like, and I text him every time. I'm like, bro, I. I, I just saw you again. Like, this is three times tonight. <laughs> like, <laughs> we should be like the police force in your movie. We're all, we're all on the border. We should all be the guy from that thing. It's like, it's like everybody you go, I know that guy from something. <laughs> Howie's in it. Howie's one of the guys. I think, I think it, for the border patrol one, I think you need to play the captain. Like, oh, not I just think that's, I think and that's I'm gonna, really I'm funny. I'm going to flat top it. Dude, oh, you're I, gonna I haven't go cut like, my hair. Have you yeah. seen it? I just, haven't cut it. Just a, a squared away flat top and you're super anal and you're you're constantly, you know, telling us to get along. Oh man, that would be perfect. Yeah. I'll be Niedermeyer from Animal House. And 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 your father is like the director of Border Patrol. So like you're not going anywhere. Like like we have to just yeah, you're you're invincible. Brendan Gleason. We'll have Brendan Gleason play my father. <laughs> Dude, honestly, it's not joking. I mean, we'll talk about it after this thing's over, but that's that storyline's fantastic. Those guys are let's, let me let me would love that, I think. I mean, I mean they're always it's, looking it's, the and plus the combination of the drinking bros with uh merging those yeah. guys with our our yeah. universe. I think collide. those I think those universes would collide. People would lose their minds. If when that trailer came out, they would go, No, no, there's no way. <laughs> Crazy. but anyway where can where can people find you where they can where can they listen um, to your stuff well late so basically my my uh album's coming out jamie kaler uh happy father days talked about my perils of being a middle-aged dude with young children um but the dad lands is basically my home away from home and i post a lot in the drinking bros as the dad lands and drinking bros poop, poop professionals or whatever but um and that's a most of the, the stuff dad I lands do. is your facebook page yeah and, it's my uh, facebook podcasts. page my instagram jamie kaler at jamie kaler i'm sure you'll put yeah. a link to it and yeah we'll it have it all in there i do feel like i mean i love doing the podcast with you but i feel like i can't it's so funny because i'll post something in the in the drinking bros and they'll go They'll start listing my credits. They'll go like, hey, guy from Tacoma FD, we missed you. What's happening? And they'll go, oh, the guy from my boys or whatever. <laughs> no, that's great. Yeah. They love it when, when, when you guys come in there and hang out. Like they, because it's, it's, I love it, man. It's validation. Like it's, it's like, so funny oh, because they'll be like, they'll go, hey, I saw you in this. I go, oh, that's right. I am an actor. Because when I'm in the drinking bros, <laughs> I think as a veteran. Yeah. You're I like, think oh, of I'm like. in the Navy. 
<laughs> That's all I ever think about. I go, oh, I'm a Navy guy. And then they'll go, well, you're an actor. And I go, oh, I am an actor. Oh, uh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. That's what I do for a living. I am an actor. That's really so cool. So it's kind of cool to see everybody. So, yeah, I do hope people come over. And, and especially if you're a parent with kids and, and this is this quarantine is the worst thing that's ever happened in your life, <laughs> then please come over to the Dadlands and help us out because we need we need horrible stories of other people who are uh, suffering so that we can all feel better about ourselves. <laughs> Absolutely. So please, guys, yes, go check out Jamie Kaler. We'll put his links down uh, in the in the description on YouTube. And, and Jamie, thanks for taking the time to do this. Dude, share I, drink. Honestly, dude. We'll do it again. I would have done this if, even if you weren't recording. You know, I, I love <laughs> yes. I love our chats. <laughs> well, they're always insane because it's always me pitching you some other fucking weird. I'm, the, I'm totally, and I'm all, and I and never once have been like, no, that's a terrible idea. Uh, I'm always I like, know about that's that a one. great idea, man. That's, that's fantastic. <laughs> uh, awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining in. This is Free Range America. I love you, brother. Hey, dude, feel better, man. And uh, hopefully I'll see you soon.